The energy that an item possesses due to its motion is called kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of an object, which is measured in joules, varies jointly, varies jointly with the mass of the object and the square of its velocity. And then they ask us if the kinetic energy of a 3 kilogram ball traveling 12 meters per second is 216 joules, how heavy is a ball that generates 250 joules of energy when traveling at 10 meters per second? And they really shouldn't be saying how heavy. They should say, what is the mass of a ball? Because we care about mass, not weight. So we'll answer, how, what is the mass of a ball that generates 250? Let me write this down. This should be mass. What is the mass of a ball that generates 250 joules of energy, 250 joules of energy when traveling 10 meters per second? So let's think about it. Let's think about what they tell us in this first paragraph over here. The kinetic energy of an object. So I'll just call that. So the kinetic energy. I'll call that energy. Energy. Not there's not three bars there. It's energy, and I'll write a little small k here to say this is kinetic energy. So they say the kinetic energy, which is measured in joules, and I won't focus on the units here because this is really the point of this is not to be a physics problem. The point of this is to, for you to understand joint variation, and I don't want to introduce you to all the dimensional analysis that might confuse you right now. So let's just work on let's just work on the 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 proportionality that's going on over here, the variation. So they say that kinetic energy of an object varies jointly with the mass of the object and the square of its velocity. So that sentence right there says that it varies. Varies jointly, so it's proportional to, it's proportional to the mass of the object, the mass of the object. I'll call that m, m, and the square of its velocity. I'll call that so the velocity. Let's call that v, and so the square of its velocity will be v squared. And then they tell us, then they tell us. So we need to figure out if we want to really apply this. We need to figure out what this k value is right here. We need to figure out what k is. Then they tell us if the kinetic energy of a 3 kilogram ball traveling 12 meters per second. So here, mass is 3 kilograms. Our mass is 3 kilograms. So we have a 3 kilogram ball traveling 12 meters per second. So our velocity is 12 meters per second. 12 meters per second. And so our velocity, so this is going to be times 12, 12 squared. If the kinetic energy of a 3 kilogram ball traveling 12 meters per second is 216 joules, so this right here is the energy. So it's going to be 216 joules. 216 joules. And then we don't know what this constant is. We don't know what this thing, right? Let me do that in that green color. We don't know what this constant is. So now we know everything else in this equation we set up, and we can now solve for k. And I want to assure you that the units do work out. Because 216 a joule is really the same thing as a kilogram times a meter squared per second squared. And so you actually do get joules on both sides of this. And the units for the k are actually, uh, there, there actually are unit, are no units for the k. It is, it is unit less. But with that said, let's solve for k. So 3 times 12 squared. So 12 squared is 144. And then let's just figure out what 3 times 144 is. We might be able to do that in our head, but just so that we, can, we don't make any mistakes. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. We have this 1 that we carried, so it's 13. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, 432. So all of this over here is 432. And so if we want to solve for k, we can divide both sides by 432. Let me rewrite this. Let me flip it around, actually. So we have 432 times k times k is equal to 216. Is equal to 216. And then to solve for k, you just divide both sides by 432. 432 divide by 432. And we get k is equal to. And this looks fancy, but or it, or it looks hard to it looks hard to simplify. But if you just double 216, you get 432. Divide the numerator by 216, you get one. Divide the denominator by 432, you get or, or divide the denominator by 216, you got to divide by the same thing, you get two. This is this is literally just one half. So k over here is equal to one half. So now we're ready to answer the second part. We we were able to use this first sentence over here. We were able to use this first sentence here to figure out to figure out our k, and now we can answer the second part. They're asking us 
how heavy, or actually we should say, what is the mass of a ball that generates 250 joules of energy when traveling 10 meters per second? So over here, we're talking about 250 joules. 250 joules is going to be equal to k, which is we know is now 1 half. We just figured that out. k is equal to 1 half is equal to 1 half times the mass. And that's what we need to figure out. What is the mass of the ball that generates this? Times the mass when traveling 10 meters per second. So our velocity is 10. So mass times 10 squared. And so we get 10 squared is 100. And so we have 1 half times 100 is going to be 50. So we get 50 times our mass. I'm going to try to keep the same colors here. 50, that's not the same color. 50 times our mass is going to be equal to 250. Is equal to 250. And then to solve for mass, you divide both sides by 50. Divide both sides by 50. Divide both sides by 50. On the right hand side, you just get mass. On the left hand side, you just get 250 divided by 50. You get 5. So our mass is 5. And we didn't keep track of the units here, but you had joules over here. So this is 250 joules. And then this is joules divided by meter squared per. If you look at these units, it would be meter squared per second squared. You actually would get kilograms. So let me write this down. So you actually do get 5 kilograms. So the mass of the object in question is 5 kilograms.